Sure, Old Town Riga in Latvia is gorgeous, but is it enough to cure a high blood sugar rage? Hi, I'm Jeremy. Thanks for watching. Today was our first full day in Riga, the capital of Latvia. Masio and I were hoping that this town would be able to cure our respective bad moods. My blood sugar first thing in the morning was 198, and we went out to have breakfast with the other people in our hostel. We chatted with travelers from Japan and from Belgium, as we had the regular hostel type breakfast of uh, bread and weird unidentifiable spreads. We spent all morning in our room and then we went out into Riga finally in the afternoon. The first thing I did was check my blood sugar next to this statue. Well, it was 290. I couldn't believe it. I was so mad. And I really came this close to taking my blood sugar meter and smashing it on the sidewalk. But thankfully the travel gods intervened and said, Jeremy, you need that meter. Don't do it. So I didn't do it, but boy, I was mad. It was at least relatively warm in Riga today, 13 degrees. And the first thing we found was this cool church called the Nativity of Christ Cathedral. Or, as they say in Latvian, Christus Piedzimshanas, etc. Pares tizi, pares tizi go. Christus Piedzimshanas, Piedzimshanas, go, go, go. Christus Piedzimshanas, pares tizi go, cathedrale. Did I do it? It was gorgeous with these kind of repetitive gold designs on each little part of it. A lot of uh, big rounded arcs everywhere. The golden color against the big bold blue sky. We didn't go in, but the outside was really inspiring. Maybe things are looking up today. We walked over to Old Town Riga, which is a big area and a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It's kind of similar to Old Town Tallinn. It's full of these cobblestone streets and these roads that kind of wind in random little directions. Just looking at a map, you can see how crazy the street layout is. The buildings looked old, but they had brand new paint jobs, and there was a kind of vibrancy to the air. People were walking around shopping, and there were even various kinds of live music. There are actually kind of more extremes here than in Old Town Tallinn. There are much quirkier touches here in Riga, but there are also some ugly chain stores. There's even the always depressing side of American food chains. For some reason, I didn't want to go into Fridays. What I did want was to find a cafe, because I wanted to have something to eat and really have an excuse to take some Humalogs. I was still miffed about the 290. Well, on the western edge of Old Town, we found this really cool place that had a great big second floor area with a gigantic window. I got this thick kind of caramel cake and took six units of Humalog. Me and Masio ate our snacks and watched the people walking around the streets down below, including this undercover Zach Galifianakis. Then we went and explored more parts of Old Town. One thing that distinguishes Riga is the number of statues and stone figures on a lot of the buildings. They all seemed very intricate and very grand. Although, as in other places we've seen on this trip, a lot of the art was in a more simple style with kind of simple lines and very bold features. Things looked traditional, but there were a lot of more well, modern touches. By the time we got to this giant cathedral and its big square, I think me and Masayo both felt a lot better. Unfortunately, the watch that I bought last week in Estonia for five euros was an hour slow and not moving. I was hoping it would last at least a month. We dodged Riga's trams. I love trams, trams anywhere are cool. And we made it to the most famous part of Old Town Riga, which is this building called the House of the Blackheads. The original House of the Blackheads was built in 1334. It was a conference hall for various guilds and craftsmen. One group of craftsmen, who were young unmarried men, took as their patron saint this guy Saint Maurice, who was a real black soldier from Egypt in the 3rd century. In later centuries, more fanciful decorations were added to the outside of the building, but Germany bombed the building in 1941, and what they didn't destroy, the Soviets destroyed in 1948. The current beloved reconstruction dates from the late 1990s. The sun was hanging in the sky right over the Daugava River, slanting into Old Town. And it seemed to be staying there for hours. It seemed like the sun was supposed to be setting, but it wanted to hang around in the sky for a long time, as if to give us a little more warmth and friendliness to help our moods. Outside the house of the Blackheads, I checked my blood sugar and was ecstatic to see that it was 103. Praise Saint Maurice! 
As me and Maseo tried to take a selfie, a woman with a Ukrainian flag sticking out of her bag approached us and offered to take the picture for us. So she did. And I got to enjoy this little moment of international cooperation. An American guy and a Japanese woman in downtown Riga, Latvia, having their photo taken by a Ukrainian woman. Cool. The last things we saw in Old Town were the Powder Tower, of which I was inordinately fond, and this building full of town seals from around Latvia, including the one from Valka, where we just came from yesterday. And then we saw the coolest park we've seen on this whole trip so far. It's right next to Old Town, it's called Kronvalda Park. It's extremely beautiful. There's a little stream that runs through the middle. There are ducks that swim in the stream and in this little pond. There are children running around. There are couples on benches talking and kissing. There are love locks on bridges. And there's even more live music. And despite my extreme budgetary concerns, even I gave this guy two euros. Good deed for the day, done. And here in Kronvalda Park, I reflected on my 103 blood sugar and thought, well, that might be a little low for all this walking we're doing, plus all that humalog I took for the cake, so I better eat a Mars bar. So I did. We checked out Riga's Monument to Freedom, which was the site of a big 1987 rally against the Soviet Union, and walked back to the hostel. The sun was unable to delay its setting anymore, and it turned out that nighttime Riga was just as beautiful as daytime Riga, just in a different way. Dinner kind of turned out exactly like it had one night in Tallinn last week. Our plan was to go to this Armenian restaurant down the street. We got there, and the building was closed and dark and shut down. There was a little sign, though, right on the front door, in English, that explained that while the building was closed, the restaurant was still open, and it gave a phone number we could call if we wanted some food. We didn't know what that meant, we didn't have a phone anyway, so we went across the street to this place called Kebab's Fix. We didn't know what to expect. Plus the menu was all in Latvian, so I had to guess. I just chose at random... Tsukgalias. And I said that to the staff girl. Tsukgalias, please. And she understood. Turns out Tsukgalias means pork. So I had pork in this little bread thing with some fries, and I really had to guess about this insulin shot, because I didn't know how many carbs were in any of this. I had to factor in the big shot I had taken for the snack, the walking we did, the Mars bar I ate. Woo! And between you and I, I think I guessed pretty good. On the way home, I was so confident in my diabetic abilities that we stopped in a store and I got a donut and a beer, just because I liked the label. And I wanted to say the name. Valmier Muija. In the hostel, I took Humalog for the beer and the donut dessert. They were both delicious. And a little while later, I checked 337. <sighs> but the day did end on a good note as me and Maseo went out to the hostel kitchen. And there was a Chinese traveler there who had this little tea kit. And he had some tea that he said his father had grown in China. So this was real, live, authentic Chinese tea direct from the source. And we chatted with him as we drank the tea. I'm not a tea guy. I like it okay, but it just tastes like hot water to me. This tea was great. I could actually taste this tea. Good thing and a bad thing. I think one of the things I liked best was the ducks. The bad thing was the chain stores in Old Town. Come on, Riga, chain stores. Ugh. Diabetes thoughts for today. The average blood sugar today was 220. The good part was that I had a blood sugar finally between 70 and 130. I way screwed it up. I didn't need the Mars bar and I probably needed a couple more units just for the beer itself, which was pretty thick. But hey, I believe I'm learning how to travel in Europe with diabetes. Tomorrow we're leaving this city. We're going down to a place called Daugav Pils. Not only do I love the name, but this is truly a Russian part of Latvia. So much so that I've actually been studying a few phrases in Russian, and I taught myself the Cyrillic alphabet just so I could read train schedules and stuff. Also, tomorrow, my first day of this entire trip where every blood sugar is under 200.